Um, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this talk, What's New in GRPC? Uh, my name is Juna Ye, and I'm a GRPC maintainer on the Go team. And I'm excited to be here to share the latest updates on GRPC. So the goal of this talk is to give you an overview of the new features that we launched in GRPC recently. And we have a lot to cover, so I'm not getting into too much details on each individual features that we have. Instead, um, you'll be seeing short links in most of the slides throughout my presentation, and that will take you to our resources and documentation, and that you can learn about it after the talk. And as always, you can certainly talk to us during the day if you have any questions or feedback. All right, so let's get started. So Kubernetes, Kubernetes Gateway API is a new API that provides an extensible way um, to manage your traffic routing in, in Kubernetes clusters. It is designed to as a revamp of the ingress resource and to get rid of the vendor specific annotations. The special interest group firstly identified the most common use cases of the ingress resource and bring that over, build them into the Kubernetes Gateway API. We introduced GRPC route to integrate GRPC with the Gateway API so that you can rather draw GRPC traffic earlier, easier, um, rather than having to do it at the level of HTTP. GRPC route is now currently in the experimental stream and will be promoted to V1 Beta 1 soon. And it's currently supported by GCP traffic director and several other controllers. The other exciting thing in this space is Gamma um, using the Gateway API to manage not just for ingress, but also for surface mesh use cases. Um, and we are deeply engaged in the design process to ensure that GRPC proxyless service mesh will have the first class support with the, in the APIs. So stay tuned for the ability um, to use the vendor agnostic Kubernetes Gateway API to manage your GRPC proxyless service mesh. And we also have a birds of feather topic around service mesh. Um, feel free to join Richard and myself if you are interested in this topic after this talk. We have been working hard to expand our support in load balancing, and one of them is custom backend metrics. This is a mechanism in the GRPC library that allows you to inject your own custom metrics at the GRPC server, and these metrics can be used with your load balancing policy. We follow the open request cause aggregation standard that you can report your custom metrics from your backend in two ways. The first option is to sending us the metrics when RPC finishes, and then the alternative is to create a dialogue channel and periodically sending out um, the metrics to us. If you want to learn more about the feature, follow the short link at the bottom, ending with grpc-cbm, and that will take you to our developer guides with example code. We recently added Wally Run Robin low balancing policy, which also mentioned in the previous talk. And it can be used with the custom backend metrics that we just covered a few seconds ago. It's really simple to configure your server uh, if you're using GCP traffic director. Just set the custom policy as Wally Run Robin and with the parameters based on your needs. If you prefer to send the metrics out of band, set enable OOB load report to true, and additional parameters are also available for you to fine tune the behavior of the Wally Run Robin policy that we provided to you. You can still leverage our Wally Run Robin policy if you're not using TD, and you just set the load balancing config with a configuration in a JSON format and when you're calling dial function in your application. Once you configure LB policy as way they run Robin, the next step is to send metrics from your backends. Here is a formula of how GRPC load balancer selects a backend surface with metrics that you send to us, which includes CPU utilization, QPS, EPS, and error penalty. Below is an example of using out of band reporting. In the GRPC server code, you create server metrics recorder with the options that fits your needs, like the minimum reporting interval. 
and then register your recorder and start sending CPU utilization, EPS, QPS, etc. at any places that you like. That's all you need to do to enable weighted round robin policy in provided by JRPC. And more details can be found at the show link at the bottom ending with grpc-wrr. The next one, randomized pick first. So we are extending the existing pick first policy with a flag um, to shuffle the address order that your name resolver returns. As you may know, pick first is like a first travel world policy and just like its name, when the name resolver returns a list of the addresses, we try to connect with the first one and can then connect to the second one if the first attempt failed. Pick first is commonly used with a DNS server um, shuffling the address order. In some cases where your DNS server couldn't support a shovel or, under, or randomization, um, you can simply flip the flag, shuffle address list in your drop PC code, and we will do that for you. And next one, we are excited to share that Staple Session Affinity will be available soon. It is a load balancing technique that ensures all the requests from a particular client session are routed to the same backend server. And this is extremely helpful for applications that maintain the state information for each session, such as like shopping carts, user profiles. The most common approach to achieve it is to use cookies. So when the first request sends out, the load balancer routes it to a server based on your existing LB policy. And the server returns the response back to the load balancer, and it will encode the server information and send the cookie, set the cookie in the response header, which will return to your application later. If you want to send a subsequent request to the same server, you can store um, the cookie in your application. In the following request, include the cookie in your request, and the load balancer will decode the cookie to retrieve the server information and route request to the same backend server. Before the cookie is expired, all subsequent requests with the cookie are routed to the same backend server. And like I mentioned before, this is extremely helpful to improve the user experiences by ensuring all the requests from a particular client station are processed by the same backend server, especially for applications that requires to maintain the state information like shopping cards um, or the user profiles. So now let's take a look how to configure Staple Session Affinity with a Kubernetes resource, GCP Session Affinity Policy. So in the YAML file, you set the cookie TTL time in seconds and target reference to specify which route or service that you want to enable Staple Session Affinity. And if you want to learn more about the feature, check out the short link at the below, which will take you to our talk at KuCom Europe earlier this year. And the next one that I'm going to talk about is microservices observability. So it is released to public preview for Go and Java last year. And we are excited to announce that it is generally available across all the languages that JRPC supports. This is a powerful tool for you to gain insights into your system's behavior. It helps you to quickly identify the problem, improve the performance and reliability, and so that you can make better decisions about how to architect or manage your system. Microservices observability has two, three types of data. First of all, logs, for example, like how the message payloads looks like, the final status, and also the error code. Secondly, it also has metrics, such as like how many RPCs started, how many RPCs completed over the time. Last but not least, microservices observability also provides traces which represents how long RPCs are taken to complete and also known as round trip latency. If you are using microservices based architecture, you should definitely enable observability to get all the, def all the benefits that I just mentioned. And it's really simple. All you'll need to do is to provide an observability config and GRPC will send logs, metrics, and traces for you 
to Google Cloud Platform or any third-party services that they are currently using. We built a unified plugin integrated with any platform that supports open census metrics and traces. And this makes it easy for you to identify and troubleshoot problem regardless of the stack that you're using now. Another good news is we are working on open telemetry support that we also mentioned in the earlier keynote. And um, we are trying really, really hard to get open telemetry support into gRPC. Open telemetry is a new open source standard for observability, and um, it will be more extensible, flexible, and many companies are involved in the design. So stay tuned for more updates on open telemetry support in gRPC. Here, I want to show you an example of observability configuration. In the cloud logging, you can list out the events that you are interested in, or use star for all the relevant events, or exclude certain events. And to enable monitoring, all you have to do is to add cloud monitoring object as a value that we have on the slides. In cloud trace, it could be overwhelming if you are sending all of the traces data because the amount is so huge. So you can specify the sampling rate to fit your needs. In this example, uh, we have 5% of the trace data are randomly selected and sent to Google Cloud Platform. After that, you will have to add a few lines into your application. In the main function, call observability.start and pass a context to start the feature, and gRPC library will start sending logs, metrics, and traces to Google Cloud Platform. And don't forget to call observability.end um, to flush out the data and clear the resource and memory before closing down your application. And that's all you need to enable microservices observability, which helps you to gain insights of your system's performance and identify potential problems. We also have a birds of a feather topic on observability and join Fawn, who's leading the session, if you are interested in the topic. So here comes some of the fancy feature that I like to take this chance to quickly go through. Firstly, custom load balancing policy. If our building policy doesn't fit your needs, unfortunately, you can still bring your own custom lobby policy to into gRPC. And we recently added support of our back HTTP filter for service method scope client authorization on XTS enabled gRPC servers. Lastly, gRPC clients currently support both IPv4 and IPv6. However, most implementation doesn't have support have individual backends have both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses, and we are working on that. So in the near future, our API will support multiple addresses returned um, per endpoint, and happy eyeballs will be used to determine the address. And next, we recently added support of Java modules and the module name of the gRPC draw file automatically generated for you. And another feature that we have in gRPC Java is least request load balancing. This is contributed by Spotify, and I want to encourage all of you to bring your ideas to gRPC and benefits all gRPC users across the world. In the latest release of gRPC Python, we have removed all the external dependencies this means gRPC Python now officially have no dependency. And besides this, we also add support of Mac M1 chip. So in the latest release, you will find Mac universal dynamic libraries, which can be run both on M1 or Intel chips. In gRPC C core, we are introducing Event Engine, a new public interface for applications to provide your custom behavior or implementations for I.O. and synchronous executions. For example, driving gRPC from the external event loops. You can implement your own event engine and override the methods with the behavior that you want and make sure you set event engine factory to your own class before, before initiating any gRPC object. If you're interested in this feature, check out the short link below. Uh, check out the short links up below, ending up with gRPC-EE. 
And on the C++ side, we recently upgrade the way that we notify you when asynchronous RPC actions are completed. And we are excited to introduce the new callback API. And the good news is you no longer need to manage any threads and like keep regularly polling our completion queue. And uh, whenever the gRPC actions are completed, your call will directly call by gRPC library. The callback API provides a set of methods for your application to initiate operations and your application can also override the methods like on read done, on write done to get notifications when RPC actions are completed. For more information, check out the short link and then with gRPC callback. For gRPC Go, we are introducing a new channel state, which is called idle as the initial state. And it will transition into ready when connections are made. If there's a period of time without using gRPC, we will temporarily move the channel state back to idle and close all the open connections for you to optimize the performance. And when new RPCs are calm, uh, comes in, the connection will be automatically re-established for you. No additional code, no additional effort needs to be made in your application. This feature has been available on Java and C Core for a while, and we recently added into gRPC Go, and you can also customize the idle timeout with the code on the slides. So here comes my last slide, developer tooling. So I want to share two tools that could be helpful during your gRPC journey. First, gRPC debug is a command line interface that provides you lots of debugging information, such as states about how many RPCs are being sent or failed, um, the address resolution results, and also the XDS configuration. And the second one is gRPC curl with one C in the middle. It is also a command line tool that lets you interact with your gRPC server in a curl way. So check out the two GitHub repository. These are super handy tools when you are doing development with gRPC. And if you haven't tried it out, you should definitely give it a try. All right, that brings me to the end of my talk. Make sure if it's in our gRPC.io site, which has all the documentation and code snippets, example code that we have been putting lots of effort in, and subscribe our YouTube channel to get notifications when there are new videos available. You can also request, you can always request in conversation with uh, maintainers if you have any questions. And finally, join our mailing list uh, to get the latest updates. All right, thank you for your time. And now I will hand it back to Kevin for Birds of Feather. So was there any questions um, from our new features? Yeah, we can go too deep. Yeah, Here you go. let me get your mic. Uh, thank you for telling about the new features. Uh, we are, we have been waiting for the callback-based API for some time, so it's great news. Is it already available, or is it coming soon? It is already available. Um, is I going to correct me if I'm wrong? Uh, the question is, like the callback API, um, I believe it's generally available for everyone, and it's ready for use. And we are actually adding a couple more um api that will be available soon to make it even easier for you yeah. um but you can start using it today 